Right, so I'm yeah. Gustav Notander. I work at KTH Innovation. So we're part of KTH that helps uh, researchers and students to commercialize their ideas and their mm -hmm. and their research results. So that's basically what we do. Go help them go from idea to innovation. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Carl. I work um, in Entrepreneurs Kyrkan in uh, Stockholm. Oh. Uh, I'm helping uh, running the office space and. Um, I'm actually a, a, a TEDx organizer myself, which is uh, one of the reasons that I was invited uh, here today. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, I've, I've been in uh, an organizing group for TEDx as well. My name is David Bismarck. Uh, if you search for uh, e-voting on TED.com, you'll see my TED talk. Okay. Uh, so that's why I'm here, I guess. I'm a, I'm a passionate TEDster. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, and yeah, you had a little yeah, post you, you can actually notes. tell us what we've seen. <laughs> yeah. So the first one, Christina Höck, um, she was talking about um, uh, how annoying it could be with a smart uh, house. Um, you say light go out and nothing happens. <laughs> so um, that we should, fo we sh what we should uh, expect to be seeing is more uh, uh, using these new uh, ICT um, and the Internet of Things uh, mm. for fun and. Uh, um, sort of social and fun uh, interactions mm -hmm. in real life. And that's I think that's yeah. really interesting. I mean, uh, we had a um, uh, we had a, um, an event in Entrepreneurskirken, uh, Startup Sweden, and there was uh, um, two guys who uh, who had this funny um, idea. They wanted to make, um, I'm not sure if it exists today, but they wanted to make um, an app for the smartphone to enhance um, user interaction during concerts. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and I, I was thinking about that when Christina was talking mm -hmm. about uh, having stuff that actually adapts in real time as you move. Mm -hmm. yep. So I think uh, we might be we might see more of that. Uh, All right, people yeah. moving uh, and sort mm -hmm. of changing the light setting at concerts depending on you know where people move the most or I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So a point she made as well was that you sort of you use social media or whatever to broadcast a, a, an image of yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. or something like that. I think you have to step forward. Yeah. I'll yeah, yeah, just sure, you sure. back on <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so you sort of portray yourself in this medium. And yeah. I mean, I guess if you have some kind of device or your mobile phone, you're using that to broadcast your experience of the concert yeah. to your friends who aren't there. Yeah. You know, we use Twitter today to, to tell everyone what we're doing or what we're feeling and thinking. Yeah. But maybe it could be an, a rich yeah. er version of Twitter yeah. or something that you mm. just... Yeah, exactly. Maybe and also, mm. I mean, uh, ex um, interacting real time with, with the actual physical stuff, uh, <coughs> changing the lights and depending on, you know, I mean, you can come up, you could have a brainstorming session and come up with endless possibilities. Endless possibilities, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But one, one thing that I found interesting looking at these three talks is really how the, you know, the experience, like what, what um, Christina was saying about, you know, the rational things, you know, the smart house, that's probably not where you'll see the most impact mm -hmm. uh, but rather you know life we t she talked about games she talked about experiences yeah. and you know just looking at what we saw now what stays with me are the experiences of you know seeing that choir mm -hmm. yeah. uh, with all the people connected together yeah. and you know hearing the and the, the, the sound thing. scrape and the parkour thing mm -hmm. so it's really yeah, definitely. kind of the, the power i think it's easy especially for people like myself who are very no, I mean I'm I'm a I'm an engineer, yeah. uh, so you get very focused on the kind of utilitarian mm -hmm. uh, take on it that this is useful, this is good. But what really stays with people is the experience. It's it's kind of the more cultural aspect of it, mm -hmm. and it's quite yeah, fascinating definitely. to see it that clearly that I think we did now. Definitely. Yeah, so it turns out, right, that we, we, us we used to have this like participation uh, culture where everyone sang, we sang to each other and we made, I mean, we told each mm. other stories, right? And then, then we had this brief moment uh, f during the 1800s and 1900s and to today, I guess, mm. where we were just consumers of, of cu culture. We, mm. it, we had this, uh, well, consuming uh, yeah. culture. Uh, wh where we all we do is listen to music that was produced by someone else, and mm. we we watch movies that someone else made. Uh, but now we see that people are actually interested in participating. They yeah. want to create. They want to uh, share. And, and the barriers are lowered as well yes. as to actually yeah. produce. And yeah. I think that's one of the powers of you know ICT in general. And when we talk about ICT yeah. as a game changer and all that, it's yeah. really lowering the thresholds of participation Absolutely. and production. So there are two aspects of that, I guess. Technology has now made it possible to do that. Mm. And 
it's had, it has been shown that people want to do it. I mean, before when the means of you know culture production was yeah. in the hands of a few, no one knew this. I mean, no, no one was interested in finding out if people wanted to participate. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I guess. <laughs> uh, I, I think I'm, I, I was thinking also during the talk. Um, uh, before we go over to um, to the last talk, which was uh, Shell Falkenberg, Shetel, Shetel, yeah, <laughs> um, Icelandic, I think. Norwegian or Norwegian. Icelandic, yeah. Norwegian probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think um, I started. You know, I've, a lot of thoughts came up about augmented reality uh, and um, also the the sixth uh, sense technology, which was uh, uh, one of my first uh, TED talks when I got really into TED. Uh, I saw this with Pranav Ministry, uh, the, the Indian guy who, who uh, showed a prototype of the Sixth Sense, like a device that you connect, um, it has a browser, it has a projector and a camera. And this interaction with, between, the phys between the virtual and the physical world mm -hmm. uh, that he is trying to bridge um, uh, is, is, is really interesting. Uh, if you talk about ICT as game changer, um, I just one, one clip from his talk was, Imagine you walk up at campus um, and everyone's got this device and uh, you can project, um, sort of, I go up and say hi to you and I have my projector projects. Oh, that one, yeah, yeah, yeah it's it brilliant. Yeah, it projects yeah, yeah. who you are, sort of, on, yeah, yeah, yeah. on, on your t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, your interface becomes the stuff around you. You're, you can press exactly. things and... Yeah, and you've got things. little sensors yeah. on your fingers and you can yeah. dial, mm. there is a mobile phone on your, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think in general that raises something that I was also thinking about it when they talked about the Internet of Things and you talk about millions and millions and millions of devices yep. um, and it's all screens. It's yeah. just so yeah. many, so many right. screens. So I'm yeah. thinking what's, you know, what there must be other ways of kind of displaying yeah. information, conveying the experience Definitely. than looking at a screen yeah. because yeah. that to me sounds like, or it feels a little bit like, yeah, that's 1.0. Yeah, we're that, that's, <laughs> we're what, that, that's on. what he was trying to. Because uh, mm. I mean, uh, a, a, an iPad is an extremely expensive device for the third world, and mm. uh, I think his prototype that he was showing kind of only cost like uh, a few hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, so. But there, I mean, there are issues with it. I mean, you yeah, can't I'm not sure what happened. If you display information about me, I can actually see my information. Yeah, uh, yeah, like What do you <laughs> think about me? So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so maybe we should move over to the privacy <laughs> thing that she she mentioned. Uh, wasn't really a problem, she thought. Um, yeah, because you choose. I think I think people have different opinions on that. For I think sure. she wanted to leave on a positive note. She didn't yeah. want to yeah. say there are privacy yeah. issues and they're going to kill this yeah. project. Yeah. Yeah. And I I do agree with what she said that you people find ways of dealing with it. So when we are broadcasting ourselves, we are in control of the image that we that we put out. Uh, and I think that's a great point because people tend to miss that. People yeah. tend to think that. Mm. And this is completely different from when our mobile phone is actually spying on us, which is going on, mm. you know, all the time. We, he yeah. we hear about it all the time. Uh, and it's different when you are in control. So we need to, uh, if people have control over it, then... Yeah, because I yeah. think that's an important point. Again, coming back to the Internet of Things and all of that, where mm. because then, then it's not you who actually choose what you're posting. Then it's a lot exactly. of information that's being... Oh, yeah. Thank you oh, very much. Bad. Oh, really? <laughs> Some Excellent. More Excellent. Like the gingerbread. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I but think no, I, I think that raises um, some issues because yes, if you're in control of what you're choosing to display, like the persona that you're choosing to yeah. Uh, yeah. to display, then that's one thing. But just a lot of information floating around that that it is a different matter, good or bad, but it's different. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, and the prospects are endless. I mean, there's so much yeah. you can do with it. So. Um, but one thing we were talking about in the first panel was in, in this world, uh, who owns it? I mean, it, uh, it's coupled with who is going to drive the technology. So if we're going to end up there, we need to drive the technology leading to an, in, uh, an Internet of Things. Mm. You know? yeah. And what is going to be the killer app or what is going to be an app? Is it, uh, is it Apple who's going to come up with a thing, you know, like the mobile phone that they're yeah. you know, yeah. using to already collect a lot of data? Mm. Uh, I think it's 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 so almost impossible to to predict right now. Exactly. So, but what I'm saying is, who is then going to own the data? Because if it's done proprietarily, because someone sees that oh, there's an interest for this, we can sell stuff. You know, yeah. there are they then going to own the data? Am I going to own the data? That's the privacy issues. Yeah, and um, and um, 
I mean, there's been a lot of um, talk around um, Facebook lately, the, their master plans of, of uh, the internet turning into Facebook. So <laughs> oh, yeah. it's the actual internet. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> today, I mean, you can mm. you can do you can you can do um, search um, search in the Facebook field and oh, yeah. get like web results, like you do it, like in Google. Yeah. Um, but that's a different story. You know, the whole um, the war between Facebook and Google. Um, but definitely, uh, I mean, the internet was born in, uh, into the world being completely <laughs> decentralized, and no yeah. one owns. I mean, no one owns the yeah. IP and TCP um, <laughs> protocol. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm more more actually of a layman in the terms of of of, uh, of the future of the internet. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe you can. Uh, comment on because I, I I know there's been a lot of discussion uh, around like a lot of you know uh, activists who are worried about uh, the future of the internet. Like uh, I think we should be worried about the yeah. internet. What do you think? Uh, the future. Yeah, <laughs> we should be worried about. Not worried about the future. <laughs> well, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, we we should. I prefer to have a positive outlook. On yeah, yeah, we should have a positive outlook, but we should realize that there are <laughs> threats, and we should. Yeah, I mean, of course, that's from the people who don't want an open internet. Yeah. Because yeah, that's probably what we see, I mean right? In lawmakers who don't understand it, they will pass laws that are detrimental to all these good mm. things that we see. Yeah. Mm. So I, I definitely think we should realize that yeah. we but, need but to make sure that you can root around the problem. So if Facebook yeah. is gonna is abusing its power, then it the we're eventually gonna root around them. Yeah. Well, I, I think you know I think it was uh, Kia who. Um, who was on that note that you know? Inf inf well, we talk about the internet, hmm. um, but you know, it's it's an infrastructure. I mean, it's like the grid, yeah. electricity grid, or something like yeah. that. And I don't know how that affects it all, but maybe uh, maybe that's a more neutral way to look at it instead yeah. of good or bad uh, opportunities, threats. It's an infrastructure. It's there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It can be used to a lot of different things. So the threats I see are the pe are from people who do not want to have that. Mm -hmm. So, because we see initiatives all over the world, in or I mean, to 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 make it a regulated thing. I mean, I can today I can start a business and I can rely on the infrastructure being there and I can get in touch with the people I I want to. Yeah. But there's so many different ways they want to. They, I say, I mean, you know, these business interests no. want to make sure that they get mm. some cut of what I'm doing. Mm. So yeah. if I have to pay to get to my customers, we're going to see a completely different thing. Mm. In, the, in the first panel, we were also talking about the very first talk when they said, when he said, um, mm. there are now people who do stuff because they can reach this big audience, mm. because they couldn't previously. And so now mm. they're doing all these creative things. Imagine if I want to sing a video, uh, sing a song on YouTube, and I have to pay I don't know, five cents for every person who listens to it. Or if, yeah. I, if I make this little program, which turns out ends up being the biggest blogging platform or something, what if in the first instance, when I wrote it, I had to pay you know, for people to, to be able to access it? It yeah. would just hamper mm. my creativity. Yeah. So we need to keep the net neutral. We need net mm. neutrality. I, uh, mm. That's what I think anyway. <laughs> Point made. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can make it a few uh, more times if you do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. <laughs> All right. I, I, you know, it just it just strikes me after watching this again, like I said at the beginning, how how some things are really just powerful and reach just beyond the technology. And looking at the sound, yeah, like hear the sound, the the choir at the end, or these mm. kids playing with the toys. It's yeah. just, you know, it's it's just so powerful. It's so profound. Mm. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Um. Again, like um, there was a lot of things that I uh, was wanted to, to discuss uh, after the first session, um, uh, so maybe we can I mean we can discuss that also. Um, I was very inspired by by um, was it Eric uh, Cruz's no sorry Mark Mark mm -hmm. Smith oh yeah um, and uh, how we should you know rethink uh, design and uh, uh, how things can you know adapt uh, I was actually I, I saw this might sound silly but there was uh, again <laughs> also a TED talk uh, about the uh, uh, shape-shifting smartphone oh yeah and uh, a guy he did his PhD on you know when you buy um, when you buy a a, a a book for example on, on Amazon and it's really long a really um, big book you know a thousand pages 
uh, when you press purchase, it actually sort of makes it feel heavy in, oh, a, in a way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember how it, how he did that, but uh, mm -hmm. it's like you bought a really heavy book, so your your <laughs> smartphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think like uh, again, coming back to um, we we've grown up in a, in an era of, of technical. Uh, uh, you know, dominance where we had to. I remember when I was a kid uh, and we bought our first computer and we had mm -hmm. to install, you know, with this whole manual, and it was a uh, a hard thing. But now we're, we're we're approaching a time where when it's design and uh, user uh, domi dominating by yeah, yeah, yeah. by you know, and I don't know the future of uh, of that. What do you think? Uh, is it going to continue in this really user friendly and uh, because I guess now we have the infrastructure and all the technical that yeah. we need. So, if that is what people want, it's going to happen, right? Yeah. So I mean, all these. So it's I call it data visualization, like visual, which is a hard word to say, yeah. right? <laughs> visual. Visualization. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> because that's what it is. I mean, even a physical visual that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, so you can have a power cable which sort of turns red when a lot mm. of you know current is going through yeah. it. And yeah. Uh, or you can have these physical things. Uh, so I, I've known of people who do like, um, they sell stuff online and, and when they sell a lot, they have this little, they have a figurine on, on, on their yeah. table that starts dancing or something, you know, mm. yeah. visualizing these things that you, that you want to have a presence in the world. Mm. Uh, I think that might be, so this is also tying into something uh, which is a, a concept that's been around for a couple of years, which is uh, post, uh, post the post digital world, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we we used to have music, which was a thing that you bought on something. You know, you had yeah. to buy these physical objects, and the physical objects were sort of some. It it, it had value to us. We we wanted to to have a library of them. We wanted to have them. We collected them. You know, we were yeah. proud of them. It was something we bought. Uh, and then we had music was everywhere. Uh, <laughs> just just one minute. <laughs> the music was everywhere, and sort of when we can access any music we want at any time then it's not the music itself that means something, but it's something that is post-digital. So we go to a concert, which you were talking yeah. about earlier, or we do something else. You know, we, yeah. we buy the box set, uh, mm. you know, with a signed thing and the, the thingy. Yeah. Something that means something when we don't have these physical objects. So we're now talking about a post-digital world. Mm. Yeah. Which is much more about... Which, which ties <laughs> into <laughs> this, because <laughs> if you have a power cable which changes colour, that's sort of post-digital. You're, Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, don't worry about it. I'm just pleased <laughs> to hear that you're actually talking to each other. <laughs> you had a good chat? Yeah. Yeah. Reasonable, I guess. Yeah. We had Glug. We had uh, Gingerbread. <laughs> Perfect. It's actually my, my first Glug of the year, so I'm really, really pleased as well. Yeah. yeah. It's quite nice. I yeah, think we, we probably had the most inspiring Lucia. <laughs> So, yeah. far. Mm -hmm. so far, so far. Fantastic. <laughs> well, uh, I'm uh, sorry to have to interrupt, but uh, it's time to uh, rejoin the others in, yeah. on the, uh, in the seats for our last and final uh, part of the program. Mm -hmm. So Perfect. thank you very much. Thank and you thank you, you all much. online as well. Thanks. Bye-bye.